Hi, Laura. Thank you so much for joining us today. If you could just introduce yourself to everyone, uh, tell us what your job title is, what agency you're affiliated with, if you've ever worked with um, the CESU or LTER networks, and just how long you've been working for an agency. Hi, Paige. Yes. So my name is Dr. Laura Brandt. I work with U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, and I've worked for the Fish and Wildlife Service for 25 years now. My uh, position now is called regional scientist. I'm actually in the job series that's called wildlife biologist. It's the 486 series, if anybody's familiar with that. And I've been involved with the CESU network actually from the beginning of the network um, in one way or another. My current association with it is as the technical representative for not only the South Florida Caribbean CESU, but um, also the Piedmont, South Atlantic, and the Southern Appalachian Mountains. Awesome. Thank you for your introduction. And so I had you uh, reflect on some questions related to the theme of career preparation. So how did you get your job uh, with the uh, Fish and Wildlife and what experiences led to that position? Yeah, so um, I actually never really wanted to work for the federal government. Um, when I was an undergraduate and even when I was working on my master's, I was like, no, I don't want to be a government employee. I don't I don't want to do all that administrative stuff. Mm -hmm. And um, so the, the the short version of it is that when I was finished my Ph.D., I was working on a postdoc with the University of Florida, actually looking at alligator holes in the Everglades. And my major professor came down for a conference on tree islands, in fact. And we we had a chat about um, the conference and he said, well, there's this job open open at the Arthur R. Marshall Loxhatchee National Wildlife Refuge and you need to apply for it. And I was like, well, I don't really want a job with the government. And he goes, no, you need to apply for it because you're on soft money now and you would be, I won't use the word that he used, but it would be not very smart on your part to turn down the opportunity to have a federal permanent job speak when you're right now on soft money. So a lot of it was about the connections and then the experience that I had working in um, a relevant biological mm -hmm. field. What would you have done better to prepare for your career? So I think I think about it in terms of the things that I wish I had done more in terms of um, more coursework when I was in a, gra a graduate student or more experience. And in, in conservation, um, and restoration these days, there's a lot of dealing with people. And there's a lot of uh, figuring out how to make better decisions. And when I was a graduate student, I, I didn't really have a lot of classes in things like um, running meetings and group dynamics and collaborative conservation. Um, and I didn't even know there was something called decision analysis at the time. And so, mm -hmm. I you know, I wish that I had I had known that those were other skills other than just the biological skills that would would help me move forward. <laughs> um, and so do you still have to keep training for what you do? So I, I wouldn't say have to keep training. <laughs> um, I would say want to keep training. And I think in any career, if you want to keep both keeping yourself relevant Mm -hmm. and moving forward, then you do need to continue to do training of some kind or another. There's mm -hmm. so many new advancements that, um, you know, the things that we learned in graduate school are are now old and there's there's new technology and there's new ways of thinking about it. So so it is for me it, it and I enjoy that. I enjoy the mm -hmm. constant learning um, and trying to figure things out and seeing where we are. And so the last question that we're asking all of our panelists is, in terms of career preparation, what is one piece of advice that you would have given yourself from the beginning of your career journey? I would say the first thing is making sure that you understand what your passion is, understand what you like and what you don't like to do, and then look for the, op the job opportunities that best match with that. But don't leave it at that. Look mm -hmm. for within the job, to make opportunities to do the things that you want to do by showing other people that the things that you like to do and want to do 
a really value added to the organization. And, and so it's a continual process of not just accepting what the job is, but helping to make the job better to, to fulfill the mission of the agency. Mm -hmm. That's such great advice. Thank you so much. So thank you so much, Laura, for joining us. And we will see you soon at the career panel. Great. I look forward to talking to everybody.